What's up, YouTube? I want to do a video on my personal EDC uh, everyday carry of what I carry on my person and also what I carry um, in my car. And I wanted to kind of go into the reasons what I carry and why I carry it. And I see a lot of videos of EDC where people cover, cover what they carry on their person. Um, and sometimes it seems a little outrageous on some you know, how much stuff they carry every day. Um, but I mean, if they do, you know, good for them. It's awesome. You know, I just, I don't have, I don't know, maybe that much pocket space or whatever to, to carry uh, some, some of the amount of stuff I see on YouTube. Uh, but I want to kind of go in depth of what, what and why I carry it. So basically I want to start off, um, things I carry on my person that I have all the time is I always carry a light and I generally always carry this light or I have another one, the exact same model. But it, this one's a three night, uh, TN12, and this is the 2014 model. And I got this sometime around mid 2014. And they make, I, I think, a newer version now, 2016, that has a little different uh, modes on it or whatever. I think a little better button or whatever. Kind of an improved version of it. But this one here is nice because it's adjustable down for like half a lumen, you know, what they call like a firefly mode. Get down here where basically if you're you know kind of in darkness or sitting in your car or whatever you can actually read something that's bright enough you know you could read something if you had to or look at a map or you know whatever um, it's not going to really blind you or whatever and then you can turn it up and I believe this is 60 lumen or so it goes up that and like I said that's it's nice for walking around or whatever outdoors where it's plenty plenty bright enough to uh, supply light for walking um, then it goes up I think to like 500 lumen which is a big jump and then it goes to you know, a 750 and then a 1050, and then it goes back down to the half lumen. Uh, good light, um, like I said, I carry it every day. Uh, it takes a either two one two three CR one two three batteries or a 18650 rechargeable, which is what I run. I usually replace about every month. I um, swap them out on my charger. Uh, great light for the money. I think when I bought it, it was about 50 55 bucks on Amazon. They've went up a little since. I think they're 60 70 bucks now, but. Uh, great light for the money. Like I said um, you can step up and get like a Surefire, which are awesome lights. But to get even somewhere near that kind of lumen output, you're looking probably three to four times the amount of this. And this has been drop, bump, you know, banged around my pocket or whatever. And it's it's like I said, lasted two and a half years or so. So good light. I can't say anything bad about it. I do have two, um, just in case you know one breaks or whatever. I have a spare. Uh, but great light. Carry that on me all the time. Um, Another thing is, is I carry a pocket knife. I didn't bring one up here. I actually took it out of my pocket when I got home. Uh, just some kind of utility pocket knife. Usually it's some kind of Kershaw for a utility knife. I feel they make a good knife for the value. <clears throat> um, and usually I use it for utility purposes, you know, for cutting boxes or, you know, opening stuff or whatever. And I have a Microtech um, that I carry with me a lot, but I don't use it as a utility knife. It's more of a defensive knife. And the Kershaws I run... Um, I can also use a defensive knife. I try to run like a three and a half inch blade or so. Something big enough for defensive purposes, but not, you know, monstrous and huge. Uh, and they can be picked up cheap on Amazon, eBay, you know, 25, 30, 40 bucks, you know, uh, for Kershaw. Good blade, good, you know, good steel. Uh, they, the edge lasts a long time on them, and I'm real happy with them. Um, what I carry as far as uh, firearm goes, this has been cleared off camera, but I'll go ahead and clear it on camera. Is a uh, this is a Dan Wesson uh, model V Bob uh, in nine millimeter, and I've been carrying this probably about ten months now. Uh, I switched over to it. Uh, it's been through some uh, training classes with it. Uh, like I said before, I um, kind of vetted it for carry. Uh, ran through an advanced uh, pistol class two day school. Uh, ran great. Had no malfunctions. It was about a six hundred round count class. Uh, this is basically how it came, minus the grips. These are factory Dan Wesson grips. It just didn't come on this gun. Um, I bought them from the Dan Wesson store. It's the shadow grips. But other than that, it's all um, factory gun. Um, sights came on it like that. They got the ledge. They're like the Henny um, straight eight night sights. They got single tritium module in the back and one in the front. Uh, so they basically make like an eight when you line them up at night. Um, other than that, like I said, everything's factory. Uh, gun has been great. Uh, it's kind of uh, finishes getting showing some wear now uh, you know like I said from racking it off my buckle from doing one-handed manip manipulations I mean to me it's a tool it's an awesome gun it was a, you know fairly expensive gun uh, but like I said it, I, it's a tool to me you know if I gotta 
you know, rack it off a belt buckle, it doesn't matter. I, I do whatever it takes to, you know, run the gun. It just, it's not a, uh, not a safe queen by any means. Uh, but like I said, great trigger pull, um, nice and crisp, probably about a four pound break or so on it. Um, like I said, everything's fitted just beautifully on it. I mean, these things are just short of a work of art. Um, couldn't be happier with it. You know, the front strap checkering, you know, the way the safety comes on and off. It's just, it's awesome. Um, probably the best 1911 I've ever owned. Um, so like a great, great gun. Um, got a probably realistic round count through this gun is probably about 2,500. Um, so don't have, you know, some of the high round counts, some of the Glocks and stuff I used to carry. Uh, but you know, it's definitely been vetted. Uh, definitely trust it. Uh, what I carried in is a, uh, this is DeSantis, DeSantis holster, and I believe this is like a Mad Max or something like that is the model. Um, I could be mistaken on that, but it's basically a clone of a Versamax 2. Uh, it's just a cheaper version of it. I think these are about 60, 70 bucks as opposed to Versamax where they're 140 and they're about a six or eight month wait sometimes directly from Versamax, but uh, Great holster, very comfortable, uh, rides good. I use a SOE Cobra belt for my everyday carry. It's a nice, firm, stiff belt. Uh, hides the weight of this gun very, very well. Uh, it is an all steel gun, and, it, and it, you don't hardly even know it's there, and it don't weigh down on you. But good belt, good holster. It's definitely a, a combo you'd have to run with a you know all steel gun like that. Another piece I run all the time, and like I said, this is clear because we're on camera, is a spare magazine. And this was made for me by a friend of mine who does custom Kydex. And it's basically mimics my NSR tactical mag holder that I had prior to that when I was carrying Glocks. And I carried Glocks for lots and lots of years. I really enjoy them, but I've kind of moved on to the 1911 thing. And uh, we'll see how long that goes. But it's been going for a while. Yeah, enjoy them. Anyways, uh, so I had to have him make, make me one because NSR tactical doesn't make a single stack setup. And what's nice about this, it's got the arm to kind of flex and then it's got the belt loop, um, soft belt loop on it. So basically I run it, um, you know, down here, kind of appendix style, whatever, a spare mag. So it's got that flex to it, you know, so it doesn't, it's not real rigid where it'll just gouge you right in the gut. Um, that flex makes it nice, you know, it gives you just a little bit of um, kind of uh, flexibility to it. So just like I said, it doesn't jab you and it's not uncomfortable to wear. But he did a great job on that thing, good retention and everything. I mean, just an awesome setup. Um, and like I said, that's pretty much other than my cell phone and my wallet, uh, is what I keep on me all the time. Uh, that's kind of the extent of my, my EDC on my person. Uh, like I said, what I want to really get into is what I keep in my car and, and why I keep it in my car. Uh, what I always keep in there, and I have one in every vehicle, and I keep one on my, um, plate carrier, is like an IFAT kit or a blowout kit. Um, and what it is, basically what it consists of is, is kind of the purpose of the kit is basically just to stop bleeding, you know, stop uh, major trauma wounds, gunshot wounds, you know, uh, you know, serious lacerations, something like that. And basically what's in here is just a standard IFAC with, uh, you know, rubber gloves. Um, I got a pair of uh, cutters in here for, you know, medical tape. I got an Israeli bandage. Um, like I said, more gauze so you can, you know, wrap a wound. Um, and I also keep a tourniquet. I keep a cat tourniquet. There's one in here. Um, this attaches to a bigger bag that I didn't bring up actually for the video. Uh, but I keep another tourniquet in there. I try to keep two, two tourniquets um, for use all the time you know, with me. Um, especially when I go out shooting, stuff like that. I, you know, all, like I said, I have one on my plate carrier. Uh, if I don't take my plate carrier, I take my bag that has two, uh, two tourniquets in it, in the big bag. And basically the reason behind it is you just want to be able to stop bleeding you know um, I'm not a I'm not an EMT or a medical professional so all I all I know is just basic um, trauma medical just uh, you know enough to hopefully stop bleeding until paramedics can get there and that might buy you the time um, to uh, like I said get saved from EMTs to do their job and the reason why I carry it is it's there's there's you know you can debate one way or another, there's two schools of thoughts. You know, if you're involved in a, um, you know, God forbid, a uh, an armed confrontation with somebody, you know, you the chances of you getting hit, you know, are, are kind of up there, um, or one of your loved ones, 
or you know the person that uh, you know attempted to assault you or whatever that you ended up uh, you know having to use lethal force on them. And like I said, I'm not the moral police. I'm not here to say what's right and wrong. Um, you know, like I said, there's two schools of thought as far as if you you know administer life-saving techniques to that person or not. But you know, what if it was your you know wife that was you know hit or or a family member or your child or something in the confrontation or yourself? You know, you should be able to know how to you know use this on yourself, how to apply a tourniquet on your leg or your arm. You know, um, I also keep some chest seals in the bigger bag um, that I have. Like I said, all this is just basic medical to stop bleeding. Um, it's going to buy you some time. And that's, you know, all my basic, the extent of my medical knowledge. And another thing is if you have this stuff with you and say you're involved in something major like that uh, and you're somewhere that's populated, the chances of an EMT being there or a nurse, you know, or a doctor or someone with some type of medical training, veterans, another good, another good source for that, you know, um, combat medics, you know, or just... Uh, uh, veterans around may know how to use this stuff. Um, so if you have it and you don't even know how to use it, you know, you're still ahead because you might say, hey, anybody know how to use this, you know? And you, you, know, you might get someone to step up, hey, give me that, do this, do this, whatever, and help you out. So, you know, having it is one thing. You should know how to use basically, you know, the basics of it, but, you know, maybe you'll luck out and it'll be, you know, like I said, a combat vet or EMT or someone around on scene that can assist you with, you know, whatever medical needs you, you might have. But you have this stuff with you. Um, another thing I keep in there is quick clot. Like I said, another bleeding control technique. It's just basically a wrap. You, know, you apply the, It's like a pad with a wrap. You apply it on the uh, the uh, bleeding wound or whatever, and it basically helps clot the blood to stop blood loss. Uh, another good item. Like I said, these are not real cheap, but they're not you know overly expensive. Um, but it's another good piece of kit to have with you. Uh, Another piece that I added to my kit after the fact is a uh, CPR um, basic um, barrier, whatever, you know, protection for uh, going over someone's mouth to, to administer CPR. I'm CPR certified. Um, I've, I have been for many, many years. And uh, why I had this, I was actually first responder on a, a bad accident that uh, me and my wife were first on scene. Um, we basically pulled up to a cloud of whatever next to a canal on a kind of a country road and there's two or three people out one guy was just freaking out screaming and stuff we were on our motorcycles pull up guys like just scream my kid my, my kid my kid so you know what's going on you know two other people there enough to say hey there's a woman and a child in the car well the car rolled it was like worst case scenario the car rolled ejected the passenger which is the guy running around uh, wasn't wearing a seatbelt he was actually ejected from the car but he was up, running around, you know, of course, drilling and everything, um, yelling that his child was in the car. The car was upside down in the canal, and the water was basically up to the tires. So, you know, ran up to the side of the canal. You know, they told me what was going on. Set the situation, basically stripped down. You know, I had riding boots on, so I had to get my boots, my jacket, and everything off so I wouldn't drown. Um, you know, stripped down my skivvies, jumped in the water, uh, you know, attempted to pull the uh, people from the car. Uh, Luckily, follow my lead. I jumped in. You know, some other people pulled up. They see me jump in. Man, they were right on, right on, Johnny on the spot. Jumped in right with me. Um, we attempted to, uh, I attempted to pull the, pat, uh, the driver out. Um, the other guy tried to attempt to pull the, uh, the child out of the back seat. Fortunately, with the current and everything, um, and the car had rolled before it went in. It kind of smashed the doors. The doors wouldn't open. Um, you know, yelled. Luckily, the guy had another guy had stopped. I yelled if he had a chain. He did. We, you know, I chained. Uh, around the axle, you know, some other guys chained it to this ball, this uh, pickup, pulled it up enough to kind of stabilize the car because it kept wanting to slide down every time you kind of pull on the car, it'd want to slide deeper. Stabilize the car. Anyways, uh, I couldn't get in to get the belt unlocked, um, uh, seat belt. I asked for a knife. The guy had, luckily had a pocket knife on on him because, like I said, my pants were laying on the short on the bank. Managed to cut the belt, pull the driver out, uh, hand her up to. Uh, you know, other guys that were standing on the, the shore there or the bank of the canal. Uh, other guy was managed to get the child out. And all this all this went on, and like I said, time has a, a way of lapsing, you know, when um, something like that's going on. So I'm assuming four to five minutes, you know, they were they were under before we were able to get them out of the car. Got them out of the bank, got out. I was able to start CPR on the driver. Um, lucky someone else had stopped who was a CPR instructor. They were able to start uh, CPR on the child and you know we're talking uh, 
probably a year old child, you know, very very small child. Um, anyways, uh, from CPR, may, it was able to get a pulse back on the driver. Um, ambulance showed up, fire department, everything. Uh, I said, got a pulse by the time they she got in the ambulance. Um, unfortunately, the um, they never did revive the baby. Um, they called off Metaflight, Meta got her into the hospital, um, and after kind of everything calm, you know, scene calmed down. I had noticed that I gouged my arm really bad um, through the window, I guess, you know, um, where the window had broken out. I guess there were still shards of glass. And, you know, I had some good cuts. Didn't notice the time when I was, you know, doing CPR, but I noticed she was blowing, um, you know, good amounts of blood. And it was basically uh, uh, blowing onto my arm while I was administering CPR. Didn't, didn't realize it until after the fact, um, like I said. But at that point, I was, I, I was dedicated to it. There was no way of stopping anyway. Um, but just goes to show you that, you know, had I had a CPR mask, you know, I could have maybe prevented um, the cross-contamination or, or whatever of uh, blood-on-blood -blood contact. And like I said, you, you still want to keep yourself safe. I mean, you want to help who you can. Um, and, you know, basically my thought process after the fact was, you know, I would want someone to do that for my family. You know, if, if the roles are reversed and that was someone in my family in that car, man, I want someone to stop and do the best they can. I mean, we, we all did, and just, it was kind of, the only good thing to come out of the uh, the whole ordeal was to see everybody work together. Uh, kind of restored a little bit of faith in humanity for me that, uh, you know, there are some good people out there. And it was, like I said, everybody there pretty much did something, you know, to help. You know, the, the truck wouldn't pull the car out, so there was like 10 guys pushing on the tailgate. I mean, that's helping. You know, they, they all chipped in, did something. Um, and, it, and it was a good thing to see everybody come together in the attempt to save a life, you know. Um, unfortunately, I, uh, driver passed away about 4 o'clock. I heard uh, emergency room, but she was revived. This was about 10 a.m. in the morning. So she was revived, I guess, never gained consciousness. But, um, you know, looking back on the accident, I could say I did the best I could. Um, I didn't have any regrets. I wasn't, I didn't stand there and do nothing, you know. And, you know, that's another thing about just being a, you know, a good responsible citizen. You know, like I said, I'm not the moral police. I'm not here to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. Um, but my conscience is clean in that that uh, incident. You know, I can't, I, I don't stay up at night going, if I would have just done something. You know, I, I did all I could do. Um, just, like I said, right along with everybody else there, they all did what they could do. And it, it just didn't work out, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, we, we tried. You know, we, we made the best attempt. So, anyways, that goes basically goes to show you why I added it to the kit. Um, because, uh, Basically, I called the physician at, at my work, and he said, okay, well, hey, if you, you know, you were exposed, um, come in, I'll give you some, uh, like an HIV blocker, you know, so you can get some, some labs back from, uh, from the deceased or whatever, since they're deceased, they'll release them to you or whatever, so I had to take it for about four days, uh, makes you sicker than a dog, man, like you got the flu, um, you know, called, the, the hospital released, said, hey, um, HIV negative and hep C negative, so, um, it was a good thing, you know, obviously, because uh, it would really be a bad deal if, you know, I was attempting to help someone else and then, you know, something bad happened to me, you know, and then, you know, my family, I have to think about, you know, or whatever, but uh, uh, like I said, it, it all worked out for the best in that, that regard, um, but, you know, I kind of learned a lesson, hey, I'm going to take a CPR mask with me, because, you know, my moral compass says I, I, I need to help, you know, if I can. I, I'm not a superhero, I'm not an, I'm not a... Um, Rambo, I'm not, whatever, I'm just, you know, an average guy with just a little bit of training that maybe could help somebody, and, uh, you know, I, I would like to help somebody if I can, and like I said, I'm not the moral police, I'm not saying, you know, that that's the end all be all, you should do that, and if you don't, you're a bad guy, whatever, but just th things to think about, you know, do you have enough gear with you, you know, to, if you, a car rolls in front of you, you know, and they need assistance, if they're bleeding heavily, do not to stop it, you know, you have equipment to protect yourself, you know, universal precautions to protect yourself in that situation. Because, you know, in the end, all, in the end, you know, you have to take care of you, you and your family. Um, so, like I said, just, just kind of want to touch on that, what I carry. It's not so much just having a gun isn't enough, I don't feel. Um, having a gun with some training helps. Having a gun with some, you know, basic medical, medical supply helps more. You know, just, just what little you can do because we, we all have this, you know, movie scenario in our head how it's going to go down you know i'm 
you're going to drop in the holster, you're going to put four rounds in the bad guy, and, you know, or put one round, he's going to, uh, and fall over, you know. Unfortunately, that's, that's not how um, life and death situations work, unfortunately. Um, and, I, and we don't know how we'll react until we're in them. Um, I, with my career, I have a lot of experience in dealing with emergency situations. Um, some good, some bad, and, uh, but I'm, I'm happy for the experience. Uh, so I know what I'll do in an emergency situation because I've been through, I can tell you how many, and, you know, I know how to respond. I know what I'll do, you know, in that situation. Uh, you know, I know I'll push forward because I've done it just, you know, so many, I don't want to say so many times, like I'm, like I'm a superhero and come across like that. It's, it's not how I'm trying to come across. It's just, I've been there and I've been in those situations and I've pushed through. So it's a good thing to know. If you've never been in one, you know, the first few, obviously I didn't react like that. You know, you, man, it's, it's scary at first, you know, and, and it could be scary even still, but, um, you know, you just kind of learn to push through as you go through them. But, but your first, first one, two, three, maybe five is going to be doozies, you know, and you won't remember what you did, what, what happened, whatever. But as you get going, it just becomes, unfortunately, kind of norm, the norm. You know, you can, you can think through it and you can, you can assess the situation. You know, you, can, you have a clear head and you can recall everything you did. Well, you know, the first one you couldn't tell, you couldn't repeat back anything you did. It's just a blur. So anyways, guys, like I said, I don't want to ramble on here, but, uh, I just want to cover sometimes a gun, just carrying a gun isn't enough. Um, you know, have get, get some training, you know, carry a gun and also, you know, think about things, think about little supplies that may save you, may save your family member, you know, may save a total stranger, you know, just, just, uh, it's just some food for thought. Like I said, not being the moral pre police, it's just better to think about scenarios of what you do, you know, before you're in that situation and it's emergency and then you got to make a plan. So anyways, guys, I just want to touch on it. If you like it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the video, kind of or subscribe to my channel. I want to kind of do some little thought videos like this and, and kind of expand it a little bit. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks guys.